So on with the show. In Chapter 1, we're going to just kind of talk, generally speaking, um, what is there in the Earth's atmosphere. And then we'll get into the science of how those things work together to give us the weather um, later. But just a little bit of a warning. You probably already know. Let me go back. You probably uh, have already gathered that I am at home as I record these, and there are oftentimes extra noises and extra little events such as cats running around and maybe dogs barking, but I hope you'll just bear with me and focus on what I'm trying to say, um, and uh, we'll, get these, we'll get these lectures out to you. So I am looking forward to hearing, reading about you when you turn in your introductory assignment, which I believe is due January 27th. Um, if the year is 2013, that means it's due Sunday the 27th. And remember that your assignments, when you put them in the Dropbox, I'm the only one that sees them. So that's a good thing. Keep that in mind. But as you're sharing about you, yourself, I thought I'd just share a little bit about myself. My background is actually in chemistry, which I think it works pretty well to kind of teach introduction to meteorology. I also teach introduction to astronomy in the fall. Um, and I like being outside, go figure. Um, I also like music. I play the French horn. I'm a member of our local symphony, Southeastern Iowa Symphony Orchestra. And um, we have three children, but um, only one is basically at home these days. So this is my little hint again. Uh, throughout the course, go ahead and take the time to turn in the things such as the assignment when they're due. So I know what it's what it's like to try and kind of try and I know what it's like to keep up with things and have a hard time keeping keeping up with things, but get all those points. And if you feel like you're kind of faltering, just jump right back in there. Okay, so get all the points possible. I'm looking forward to hearing about you. So here is a photo. Obviously, uh, we have some stuck cars, but you know, I'm sure that there, there's, a, there's a story behind this photo. Um, picture's worth a thousand words. Did they not know it was gonna snow, or did they not know it was gonna be as significant a snow event as it ended up being? Because that happens sometimes, doesn't it? Was there an accident kind of down the road and made everybody so they couldn't move any further? It's just interesting to see all of those cars lined up like that. So, you know, weather is <laughs> something that we cannot generally change. Now, I know that there are, there's a science out there called weather modification. Um, some would say it's kind of a far out science, but um, in general, we're kind of at the mercy of the weather. So. If you're like me, one of the things that you do when you get up in the morning is to look at what the weather forecast is. Whether it's right or not is another thing, but um, weather impacts our lives. If we're, if we're outside for any little bit, weather impacts our lives if we're trying to get from drive from point A to point B. Severe weather, I mean, most people, um, I've never met anybody who's like just kind of Eh, I don't care about severe weather. Either it fascinates you and you want to be out in the severe weather, or it scares you and you don't want to be anywhere near severe weather. So, um, Of course, when there are the wildfires, especially out there on our west coast, um, what the wind conditions are like um, or what the drought condition and or what the drought conditions have been like are a player with regard to those, um, those wildfires. So here is a uh, figure from your textbook, and the blue lines are the number of, of events for that given year, and it goes from 1980 to 2010. And then the red lines is for that given year, how much um, the cost associated with that given year. And it's interesting that you can have, for instance, if you look at 1998 right here, there were quite a few um, number of, um, uh, of weather disasters, 19. 98, thus the blue line is really high, but they weren't very costly. Um, compare that to 2005, and on the next slide, I'm going to remind you that in 2005, August 2005, Hurricane Katrina um, came up and um, intersected with uh, New Orleans and Louisiana. So in 2005, notice that although there were fewer um, severe weather events, um, 
the cost for that year was very high. One of the things with regard to hurricanes especially is, you know, who's the locations susceptible to being creamed by a hurricane are along the coasts. And historically, the coastal regions have been where people have settled um, because of transport, uh, you know, being able to transport things. So uh, along the same lines now, this is a table to kind of highlight the way you read this table is down here we have 2002 and up here we have 2007. So the top ones are the most recent. And then in here we have 05. I mentioned 2005 was Hurricane Katrina. Um, notice that we also had, before Katrina we had Dennis and after Katrina we had Rita and Wilma. So one of the things you might already know is that hurricanes are named alphabetically and now they alternate female, male, female, male name. There are six lists of hurricane names and they, they go by, um, they change the list um, um, each year, they'll go on to the next list. So um, if there's no like significance at about a particular hurricane, it will be reused six years later in that list. Does that make sense? Certain hurricanes, um, like Hurricane Katrina, though, come along, and that name will be retired. So 2005 was a bad year for hurricanes. Um, oh, some of these, you know, if, if, you're, if you're a weather junkie, you remember some of these. Okay. One of the other things I guess I would point out about Katrina is that over this last column, they have the fatalities. Um, and uh, Katrina, they have listed on here, 1,833 people were killed. And I guess I've heard that that probably is low. So um, in the next part, we'll look forward to kind of getting more into the science of the atmosphere. <laughs>